would suggest that I would find implausible. Here we go, round number one. Or as Andy Ruiz's corner says, round eight, trying to pick up where they left off six months ago. And already I see a difference in Joshua. He already fainted. First 10 seconds, we got a quick little faint, bouncing on his toes. The question is, can Anthony Joshua box at long range? That is not his strength, but it's going to have to be here tonight to take his titles back from Ruiz. A dangerous man at close range. Joshua able to tap him with a hook. You can see the extra weight on Andrew Ruiz. He is nearly 16 pounds heavier than he was back in New York City. We weren't sure if the crowd was going to be loud, but they are. Not even a minute in, and I already love the strategy of Anthony Joshua. He's not letting Andy Ruiz plant his feet. He's pivoting and fainting. He's already throwing four foot feints. I love it. Joshua says, hey, I'm six foot six, six seven. I need to engage at my benefit. He didn't do that at the Garden after he got the early knockdown in the third round. He went in for the kill, and he went in against a very dangerous end game, Andy Ruiz. That cost him. Now he's going to be much more careful. You know, both these fighters said during the buildup they want to control the center of the ring. That's where they want to call home. We'll see who can do it. Ruiz is marching forward as he was in New York six months ago, stalking. Ruiz, you can see the body, the physique is much lighter. I mean, he is full 11 pounds lighter. And he was already in tremendous physical condition, but he needs to box. Right hand blocked by Joshua Ruiz coming in, still fluid with his punches. Yeah, and Anthony Joshua can thank Vladimir Klitschko for that new physique. Klitschko told him, look, stay away from the weights. You look like a CrossFit champion. Focus more on the boxing. And Joshua told me that boxing has shaped a lot of that weight off. Right hand from Joshua, that landed. Joshua said he was going to try to keep this fight in the middle of the ring, but right now that's Andy Ruiz's territory. He, haven't, he hasn't left the middle of the ring. Yeah, but, but he's picking him apart from outside, Sergio. That's it. He's able to keep him at bay with that jab and then pop him with that one right hand. That is a recipe for success. Final minute of round number one, and Anthony Joshua, true to his word, is boxing. Does he have the discipline to do it all night? Anthony Joshua is staying in the perimeter of the ring, but inside the middle of that ring, it's all Andy Ruiz. But this was a good first round for Anthony Joshua. Boxing, sticking and moving, doing things I didn't think he had in his arsenal, which is foot feints and boxing on the outside. Certainly Joshua with a lot more respect for Ruiz this time around. That's obvious, but it has to play itself out in the ring. Ruiz tries a right hand, and he eats a right hand from Joshua. Oh, he's and, cut. and that's cut him as well. There is blood now, and that looks like it's on the eyelid. Just above the left eye, that's in a bad spot. Joshua firing off a right hand, and that opens up the champ. And let's see if Joshua remains composed. He already cut Ruiz with the first right hand, but he has to stay disciplined. Ruiz also staying composed there as well, but he wipes now with the blood. Let's go to Vaseline corner cam here after round one. Solid right hand, and that's what caused the cut of Andy Ruiz. That's also a fast, long-range right hand, too, Sergio. And that cut, it's not a bad cut in a bad spot, but what is bad, it's in the first round. Andy Ruiz is going to have to show, go through adversity for 11 more rounds. And there, Sergio, you can see the discipline. He's just jabbing nice and easy. It's not like he's overwhelming Ruiz. Doesn't look like he's having a big round. And then, bang, fast right hand, changes the whole round, changes the whole night, possibly. Ruiz not hurt. And again, he is he has a lot of resolve. He has great fighting spirit. That much we know. But he's heavier. He doesn't seem to be as aggressive here. And Joshua is able to control things at range there in round one. Look for Ruiz to, to throw more right hands to the body to try to stop the movement of Joshua. Joshua told us. I have to box to my plan, and opportunities will present themselves. He said in the first fight, he went looking for openings, and that's what put him in a dangerous position. Certainly that happened in round three back in New York City. Joshua boxing nicely, subtle foot feints. He has a good rhythm in his upper body, but right there he kept his chin a little bit too high, got caught with two jabs. Two nice, fast jabs from Andy Ruiz landing on the challenger. Yeah, Ruiz will make you pay if you lose that discipline, even for a second. Even at this weight, he comes in heavy again, 16 pounds heavy. It was Buster Douglas who came in 15 pounds heavy. 
against Evander Holyfield, and he got starched. And that's another hard right hand, and that opens up the cut. And not for nothing, Brian, but they expected this in Ruiz's corner. Manny Robles told us, yes, the first half of the round, expect Joshua to look good, but can he do it for 36 minutes? Can he do it for 12 rounds? That was a good stick right there from Joshua. Hard jab that drove back Ruiz temporarily. Ruiz, though, is always advancing. Very game. And this is how the first fight started. Joshua was moving around, not as much as he is now, not as fluid. But Ruiz was finding the range, and right now, Ruiz is finding the range. And Joshua there with a quick hook able to land on Ruiz. They exchange punches, but Joshua with the hook. Yeah, and Sergio, he is far more effective, Joshua, that is, with that jab that we saw in the first fight. This is much more of what you would think would be the amateur British style, another beautiful jab. However, even though he was a gold medalist, Anthony Joshua was not the classic British fighter. Brian, that's a great observation. If you notice, he's flicking that jab with speed. He's not putting a lot of power into it because if you put power behind jabs and you miss, you fall off balance, and that's when you get trapped by Andy Ruiz's faster hands. There he goes right there with the right hand once again. Joshua seems to have some blood now over his left eye. Both men have been cut. And that Joshua cut, just from the eyeball test here, looks like it's in a worse spot than Andy Ruiz's. Blood has been drawn for both fighters here. It's only round two, final 30 seconds. But you see a skinny, fluid Anthony Joshua able to box at range so far against the champion Andy Ruiz. Ruiz now gets him on the ropes. Again, he's going to have to take advantage of those opportunities. As soon as Joshua gets near the ropes, he better choose a side, left or right, but do not stand in front of Andrew Ruiz. Joshua able to land with a hook. Not very hard, but able to touch the face of the champion. I would love to see Joshua throw jabs to the, to the torso of Ruiz, to the stomach. see exactly where that cut was. Oh, it's a hard jab from Ruiz, doubling up on that. Now, he's not cut yet. I didn't see exactly how he got cut, Sergio, did you? That jab might have been it. But that was over to the other side of his face, I believe. Round three, clash on the dunes. Anthony Joshua, the challenger, has been able to fight at range, as advertised. Chris Mannix giving both rounds to Anthony Joshua. Brian Kenny, Sergio Mora, Chris Mannix, Adnan Verk, and Claudia Trejos here. Heavyweight Championship of the World in Saudi Arabia. There's tension, there's drama, and there are tactics in the ring as well. Joshua with the feints, Joshua keeping Ruiz at the end of the jab, but Joshua needs to bend his knees a little bit more, fight a little bit smaller, that way he can alternate in height. You see the stats right there from CompuBox. Joshua outlanding Ruiz 19 to 8. If Joshua continues standing at that height, Ruiz will time it. He will get the distance down, so he has to fight a little bit smaller. Joshua does. He needs to alternate in size and height. Can Anthony Joshua do this all night long? You can see that Ruiz is still a dangerous man. You can pick him apart all night, possibly, but if you leave yourself open for a moment, well, look, we saw the hook, we saw the right hand, the hook in round three, the right hand in round seven back at Madison Square Garden. Ruiz is a dangerous man, even at this weight, even though he's much more of a plodding heavyweight here tonight in the desert. And this is the reason Andrew Ruiz is so dangerous. He's not a mover, he doesn't use his legs, but he has extremely fast hands. The middle of the ring, he's not, he's not cutting the ring off, but he's, at, he's actually chasing Joshua down. You know, one of the things Ruiz said this week is that he wants to present as small a target as possible for Joshua. So when Joshua throws those big shots, he wants Joshua punching down as much as he can. Ruiz tries the right hand to the body. Again, this is a light, skinny Anthony Joshua. Look at him jump back from that right hand. 
Ruiz needs to double jab his way into Lando's right hands. He needs to aim the right hand to the chest or the stomach. Avoid the head right now, but he needs to double with jab, jab his way in. And Joshua has a nice range on that jab as well. He's able to pop that head and find the head of Andy Ruiz on a, what I would say, a semi-regular basis. It's not like he's schooling him, but he's doing just enough to win these rounds. No, he's keeping up at bay. And the only, the only way that the smaller, shorter Ruiz is going to close that is by double, double jabbing his way in. And he has the fast feet to do it. This is a 22-foot ring. This is a large ring. There's a lot of space for Joshua to navigate. Remember, that's what Sugar Ray Leonard did, dictating terms to Marvelous Marvin Hagler when they fought for the middleweight title back in the 80s. You want more space to dance and move if you're the boxer. Joshua now digging in the hook to the body, able to get a little braver. Now, Anthony Joshua is not letting Andy Ruiz plant his feet. That's the game plan. That's the strategy. Can he continue doing this? Because right now, he's boxing beautifully. First three rounds are a boxing clinic by the Brit. Let's once again go to Vaseline Corner Can. And there you see Joshua just using that jab as a bit of a range finder, keeping Ruiz off him from getting closer to land those combinations. It is an international event here tonight. If you're just joining us, Usher is here at a concert earlier in the week. Canelo Alvarez is here, middleweight champion of the world and light heavyweight titleist. Alexander Usyk, unified, undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world, now a top 10 heavyweight. Amir Khan is here. He has fought in Saudi Arabia just months ago. As Saudi Arabia now welcomes in the biggest sporting event in its history. Round number four, Chris Mannix, you have it all for Joshua? Yeah, all three rounds for Anthony Joshua. The jab is his most effective weapon so far in this fight. While Ruiz is probing, he still hasn't landed any significant big shots. Ruiz is stalking, but he's not jabbing his way in. He's just following Joshua, and that's the reason he's not being successful. Again, this is a legacy fight, mostly for Anthony Joshua because he submitted in that fight, Sergio. And where you have to answer is not by some sort of fake toughness, but by training and being prepared and showing your resolve every day in the gym. And it's a hard, it's a hard thing to do when you've been so successful all your life, from, from winning a gold medal to unifying the titles, doing what you used to do, uh, lifting weights, being muscular. But he stopped all that, and he just concentrated on boxing. And that's why he's looking so nice right now, boxing, moving around the ring, use, utilizing the sweet science. And look, this is a man that was able to climb off the deck against Vladimir Klitschko. So earlier, several tens of millions of dollars ago, he did show that resolve. And right now, he is showing it tactically in the ring against the man who took his title. Subtle feints and hard punching by Anthony Joshua. And right now, Andy Ruiz is trying to close the distance with no jab. Very difficult to do against a fighter that's boxing and moving laterally. Snapping jab from Joshua, landing on Ruiz's face. Just at the moment, we saw kind of that signature three-punch combination from Ruiz, where he's very, very dangerous. Good jab by Ruiz. Let's go to Claudia Trejos. Claudia? Thank you, BK. Uh, Robert Barkekin is very clear. He wants uh, AJ to move fast, move quick, keep the angles, throw the jab, maintain the distance, but make it quick. Use the feint in order to cut the distance and then go for the jugular. Back to you. Claudia, thank you. That right hand just buzzing across the face of Ruiz. Just missed. But that is dangerous. Joshua went for the jugular with that right hand right there. Just barely missed. Joshua landing with the hook, showing a good repertoire, but he's been patient. Again, it's difficult to be patient round after round. That takes confidence. It takes an enormous amount of skill. Canelo Alvarez was able to do that against Sergey Kovalev. We thought, hey, when are you going to start winning this fight? And then when he found the time was right, he put Kovalev away. That's a great comparison right there, because right now that might be Andy Ruiz's strategy. I don't know if it is or not, but right now I give the edge to Anthony Joshua's game plan. Hey, what did we see for a full decade, Sergio? Another good jab from Joshua. Floyd Mayweather saying, take him into deep water and drown him. It's not going to happen all at once. Take your time. Joshua starts to up the ante. Joshua punching with intent right now. Threw an uppercut on the inside and a double left hook. They all missed, but I love the fact that he tried it. He goes back to moving. Ruiz is always dangerous. Chopping right hand by Ruiz. 
Remember, he hit him with a hook behind the ear, changed the whole equation back at the garden. He tries again. And on the clinch, he keeps punching. I love that by Andy Ruiz, punching in the clinch. Let the referee separate you. Great ending of the round for Andy Ruiz. At AutoZone, batteries are kind of our thing. After our free testing, turns out she just needed new cables. This guy, just a fresh charge. And for them, it was time for a change. Welcome to America's number one battery destination. Getting the job done just got easier. Hey guys, if you're experiencing erectile dysfunction, you can now get treated anywhere. Like here, 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 even here. Okay, maybe not there. That's why we built Roman so it's easy to get ED meds prescribed online delivered to your door. Just visit GetRoman.com, chat with a U.S. licensed physician, and if treatment is right for you, you'll get genuine medication delivered in discreet packaging. Get started with your free online visit at GetRoman.com slash TV. Between rounds, we got to see the replays. And Sergio, that is a very dangerous right hand from Ruiz behind the ear of Anthony Joshua, given what we saw back in June when he hit him with that hook behind the ear. And Anthony Joshua was never the same that night. And that's why I told you I love the way he closed that show because he needs to remind Joshua of him getting hurt from the last fight. And those choppy right hands on the inside will do it. Anthony Joshua able to outland Andy Ruiz 10 to 8 in punches in that round. But in the ring generalship, you just got to see Joshua taking command. And Chris Mannix has given all four rounds so far to the challenger, Anthony Joshua. Yeah, I thought Andy Ruiz did some interesting things at the end of that round. But each round has looked a lot like the last, with Anthony Joshua controlling the action with the jab. Andy Ruiz struggling to find his range. And you can see the. The tactics, the strategy, and the strategy is working beautifully for Anthony Joshua. He looks like he is ready to chop up Andy Ruiz in slow motion. Do it round by round, chipping away. You can see the blood already on Ruiz. But obviously the danger is there. He showed his fighting spirit in the first fight, even getting off the deck to then drop Joshua twice in the same round. Think about that, Sergio, what it takes to do that. It takes a lot. And right now, it takes a lot for what Anthony Joshua's doing. He's boxing, staying disciplined. On the inside, he's holding on to Ruiz, not letting him get off on those punches. Right now, executing a perfect strategy. Absolutely. Rob McCracken said they were working on clinches. And I wondered, can you just do that? Can you just work on clinching and training, Sergio, and make it work? Yes, you can do that. You have to do that against a fighter like Ruiz. Do not let him get the faster hands off. Because let's not get it wrong here. The faster hands are by the chubbier fighter, the one that doesn't look like the faster uh, boxer. You know, I just wonder if he can do it successfully. So far, he has. And so far, he has shown, and that is a beautiful jab again by Joshua. He looks at least like a man who can just box the night away. If there's one criticism of Joshua so far, it's that everything is above the neck. He's not targeting the body of Andy Ruiz which is what you need to do if you want to wear a guy down late in the fight. Well, I agree with you, Chris, but not this early in the fight. Wait for the body shots the second half of the fight, because right now, Ruiz throws over the shot, over punches really well, especially with speed and timing. So don't give him the opportunity to time you. Another beautiful jab. Long, strong jab by Anthony Joshua. And when he feels the confidence, he'll wing a hook as well. Now he's smiling. And another thing, uh, Chris, uh, back to the point, if you're winning rounds by not going to the body successfully, then stick to the game plan. Another hard jab lands on the face of Ruiz. It takes tremendous concentration and discipline to be able to box like this the whole night. So far, Anthony Joshua has done so. Look at those jabs, Sergio. Beautiful work by Joshua again. You would think that a jab can be devastating, but look at the face of Andy Ruiz. Bloody, getting bruised up, and all that is because jabs. Keeping him at the end of that powerful jab. Yeah, Ruiz starting to get frustrated. He is plodding forward. He is not able to have success. Look, in spurts, he's able to do it. He's still very dangerous, and you saw by that right hand behind the ear, he might do damage on any shot but he has been kept at bay. Still, if you contrast what we saw about a month ago with Sergey Kovalev throwing a bunch of jabs at Canelo Alvarez, a lot of those punches weren't getting through. Sitting here ringside, 
virtually everything Anthony Joshua throws at Andy Ruiz is getting through. Oh, and it's a hard jab, too. Kovalev was just popping out a, a light jab on Canelo landing, but this is a stick. This is doing damage. Excellent point, Brian. There was a big difference between Kovalev's jab and AJ's jab right here. This is a smart, educated jab that Anthony Joshua's throwing. Good hard hook by Ruiz. And a right hand answer by Joshua. Right hand to the body by Joshua. Now he's trying to get in the pocket. Does he want to trade? Can he get too brave? You can see him getting fired up, but maybe that's not the best idea. Now he goes back to the movement. Stick Dancing. to what's working. Stick to what's working here. Do not let the crowd get involved. Do not mix it up with the man with the faster hands, and that's Andy Ruiz. You can see even there Ruiz pawing with the jab and Joshua moving out of arm's way. If he can do that the rest of the night, the titles are his again. I didn't think that Joshua could do this for 12 rounds. And right now, it's not even halfway, it's halfway through, but if he can do it in the latter part of the fight, it's just an excellent strategy by AJ. Rob McCracken saying, hey, look, this is a guy who had such a success at mid-range on the way up, even winning an Olympic gold medal. It happened so fast that we never had time to train him as a classic amateur. Never had to, you know, move and stick the way we see traditional tall boxers box just like that. Could they do it in one camp so far halfway through? The answer is yes. And this is the reason that I wasn't I wasn't agreeing with Chris Mannix saying that they needed to change trainers. Robert McCracken knows his man, and right now they're executing the game plan they, they trained for for three months. They're boxing, they're sticking and moving, they're fainting. They're not letting Andrew Ruiz plant his heavy feet. One minute to go here in round six. Anthony Joshua seemingly winning every round in a beautiful hook. Snaps the head of Andy Ruiz. Wow. You know, if you're Manny Robles in the corner of Andy Ruiz, halfway through this fight, you've got to seriously consider some kind of tactical adjustment. This strategy simply isn't working. And, but you wonder if Ruiz has the conditioning to get his feet in position to land something. Again, he didn't do himself any favors. He is 16 pounds heavier than he was six months ago. So you see this, he's plodding forward, he's trying to move. And certainly if Joshua stands in front of him, he might get whacked. But, but Joshua's not doing that. But to Chris is saying that Manny Robles and Andy Ruiz's trainer, need, they need a plan B right now. Well, but what's that's plan B? But that's yeah. not what they trained for. Andy Ruiz has only had one style. He lets, he lets, the, he baits the opponents in to counter you with the faster punches. He doesn't look like the faster, stronger fighter, but he is. Joshua trying to hold there. Ruiz is going to take every opportunity. Luis Pavon says, no, don't do that on the clinch. But, well, he's got to say stop punching. Otherwise, Ruiz can keep throwing. Final seconds of round six, all Anthony Joshua here on the dunes. Back once again to the Vaseline corner cam. Nice left hook right there, timing. Joshua, but see, Joshua didn't fully commit to the right hand, and that's the reason Ruiz didn't land that left hook with as much power. In the first fight, AJ was committing with every power shot. Now he's sticking and moving with speed. Ruiz's family and friends there in California reacting to the Ruiz success in the middle of this round, but so far the champ is getting picked apart. Canelo still able to smile, able to greet the fans, but Ruiz is in trouble. And Chris, I hear what you're saying. Manny Robles is a very good trainer. There's only so much he can do, but you're right. At a certain point, they have to realize we've lost, if not every round, most every round. Something must change for us to remain heavyweight champ. Look, one thing we know about Joshua at this point of his career, he can be hurt. Obviously, he can be knocked down. If you're Andy Ruiz, I think at some point, some point soon, you gotta let your hands go. It's hard to let your hands go when you have you don't have a stationary target in front of you. You have a powerful, agile, athletic former champion in front of you. It's very difficult. And the big question was, can Anthony Joshua fight at long distance? 93% of this fight has been fought at distance, according to CompuBox. My question wasn't whether he can fight at distance. He's an Olympic gold medalist. Of course he can. My question was, can he move laterally, stick and move, faint? do exactly what he's doing right now? The answer is yes. Well, he fought a good hook by Joshua. He fought small, though, first time against Ruiz. Remember, he was bending down to his height. He is fighting very tall here tonight. He looks to clinch. Ruiz will have none of it. An admonishment from Pabon. Real-time odds from MGM Resorts, and now Anthony Joshua is the heavy favorite. 
jab and move all night long by Joshua. And it has been extremely effective. I wondered whether Anthony Joshua could float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. For seven rounds, so far he is. And just there with the right hand. Oof, he just missed with that right hand. That's a second right hand that he just barely missed with. Yeah, you know Joshua would love to do something emphatic, but that is just what got him in trouble six months ago. So he should to be, or you would figure, Rob McCracken and his team would want him to be satisfied with what's happening now. But he's got to be tempted, Sergio, right? To, when you've got a wounded man in front of you, you see the face puffing up on Ruiz, to throw something like that. Get in close and yeah, train. But, but Joshua learned his lesson from the first fight. Forget the bravado, stick and move, box. Let Ruiz, let Ruiz come forward and, and make the mistake. And Joshua able to clinch there and hold back Ruiz. Ruiz well within his rights to try to throw when he's getting clinched. Notice, notice every time Joshua lands a big punch, he still doesn't come forward. He stays disciplined and continues boxing on his back foot behind the jab. Right. And that's the first time I saw Joshua actually spring in and clinch. Pabon should actually warn Joshua for that. One thing Joshua knows at this point, Andy Ruiz, great chin. One of the best chins in all the heavyweight division. Joshua pounding his chest, just full of confidence, spring on a step, fighting behind the jab, sticking to the strategy. And you saw Ruiz there lunge it. Oh, he eats a right hand. Beautiful right by Joshua. And trading with the hook, that was dangerous. Joshua, again, able to avoid that hook just seconds ago, but Ruiz able to land there. And smothering. As soon as Ruiz wanted to let go of his punches, smothered and extinguished that. And that's some frustration on the part of Andy Ruiz. No question. As you get a good look here at the crowd in Riyadh, here at the Diria Arena, built just in two months, 15,000 here tonight. They want excitement, they're getting it. Now it's more tactical, it's more strategic, but this is boxing at the highest level and a high level of skill. And it could all change with one punch of Andy Ruiz. He punches that hard and he's that fast. And Joshua not just hitting with a feather duster, he's throwing hard shots. The harder blows have been landed by Joshua as well. See right there, that right hand. He didn't commit to that right hand. He kind of threw it to bait Ruiz to throw a counter. Just excellent strategy. I keep repeating how excellent he's been executing his game plan, Anthony Joshua. You know, it's kind of funny, Brian. From our seat ringside, the entire Sky Sports team is sitting in front of us, and many of them are ex-fighters. So when Anthony Joshua catches their eye during a clinch, they're all standing up to offer their own advice. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the journalistic integrity, I wonder? Round eight, and every round so far, according to Chris Mannix, going to Anthony Joshua, we concur. Sergio, I don't mean to speak to, uh, for you, but I would believe you would say that as well. I don't agree with Chris Mannix much, but I agree this time. <laughs> Let's go to Claudia Trejos. BK, McCracken is sure that this is the fight plan necessary. This was the fight plan that was supposed to be implemented on the first fight back on June 1st. Stay long, keep the jab, and always look for that opportunity. And when he's actually coming in, Andy, they just have to smother him, shorten him, just do not let him out. But stay tall and stay long. That was the fight plan in the first fight, and now he's actually sticking to it. Claudia, thank you. Well, that's what you, we heard, especially in the one-night documentary that we have on DAZN, the Sly Stallone film, you could hear. That was what they were saying to Joshua in the corner, but Joshua was just not locked in that night. I mean, he was spacey. He walked in just looking around like he was the king, and he found that you have to prove it in the ring every night. I already see two things that Andy Ruiz is doing different in this round. He's forgetting about the head. He's throwing the right hands to the body. It's a great strategy. Just aim, keep aiming for the body. Well, Manny Robles told us that they saw a hole in Anthony Joshua in the sixth round back in the first fight. Uh oh. And right hand by Ruiz. That was a chopping right hand to the top of Anthony Joshua's head. You know, that's at least the second time that Andy Ruiz has clipped Joshua with something of a cheap shot during a tie up or a clinch. And Joshua seems to be getting a little bit frustrated with it. Oh, no question. Look, at the end of that last round, I just mentioned it wasn't a big deal. But Andrew Ruiz just took a swipe clearly after the bell had rung. He is very frustrated in the ring. Lands the right hand to the body. And what I was going to say, Sergio, you're right. Manny Robles had said, hey, we saw a hole in that sixth round, which you might remember looked good for Anthony Joshua. But they said we saw Ruiz was able to have success to the body. And that's a hard right hand off the hook by Ruiz. Here's Ruiz's big chance. He swats him with the right hand as well. 
This is where we starts fighting his fight. Do not, uh, do not punch in between the shots of the faster fighter. What does Joshua do now? Does he engage? Does he try to mix it up? Or does he stand back and jab? Stand back and jab, exactly what he's been doing. Do not switch it, mix it up with the faster fighter. Manny Robles said, hey, it's round eight. He meant round one, but in round eight, his man comes alive. This is the best round for Ruiz. Ruiz roughing things up here every time he gets in. And look, that's within his right. It's up to the referee, and that jab landed, and he blocked the hook. But every time he goes in, oh, gets strafing hook by Ruiz. But it's up to the referee to say break and stop punching. Until then, Andy Ruiz can punch. No, Ruiz doing the right thing, too. He's not letting Joshua hold on anymore. He's pushing him. Well, the fight is on. The champ answered back nicely in that round. The fight is on, Brian. You are right. Here we're gonna see. Here we're gonna see that chopping right hand. Joshua trying to hold, but Ruiz doing this. This is what you need to do as a fighter. Let the let the referee break you up. Let the referee warn you for the dirty tactics. And this is where he does not want to be. Joshua does not want to mix it up with the faster fighter. I keep insisting, do not exchange combinations with the man with the faster hands. Yeah, we saw that six months ago, no question. You can see how dangerous even a chubbier Andy Ruiz is on the inside with those hooks in the right hand. And remember, he was able to hurt Anthony Joshua with both the hook and the right hand in the first fight. It's not some one-punch wonder. This guy can fight on the inside. Heavyweight Championship of the World, round nine, getting late in this fight. It's been mostly all Anthony Joshua, and there Chris Mannix, I think, reflecting the change in the fight, giving the first round of the night to the heavyweight champion, Andy Ruiz. Yeah, one thing I think both fighters should know right now is Louis Pabon, the referee, sometimes he yells stop, but then doesn't really get in the middle of him. So you gotta protect yourself at all times in those situations, because Louis is gonna take some time to get in there. No, no, I, I agree, I agree. This time I do agree with you, Chris. He's fine, he, he doesn't know whether to stop the action or let him fight. Maybe it's because Ruiz is punching in between the shots and he doesn't want to get clipped by a punch. This time he was definitive. And you see the power punches landed in favor of Andy Ruiz, heavily in favor of Ruiz in that last round. Good stick by Joshua again, able to snap the head back with a jab. Varying it now with the hook as well. Joshua back on his bike. Nothing says you need to fight Mexicans, so to speak. Right, Sergio? You don't have to stand in and trade. Some guys like that. Joshua fell in love with his own power, but that's also extremely effective. Stand on the outside and pop and snap that jab. I am of Mexican descent, and I made a career not fighting in the Mexican style. Ruiz again winging those shots. Always danger. Nice jab again by Joshua. You know, some people stick and move, some people go punch for punch. Right now, this is the strategy that Anthony Joshua needs to do to win against the Mexican fighter. Stick and move. Do not engage. Do not fight the Mexican's fight. And yet he's able to keep him honest. That was a good right hand to the body by Joshua. And now Ruiz actually stops moving. He's tired of chasing Joshua. Maybe you stand in the ring and you wave him forward. You know, Chris Eubank style. Say, come to me once in a while. It's frustrating. Whenever you get a fighter floating like a butterfly, moving around, sticking, not wanting to engage, it's very frustrating. Not only for Andy Ruiz, but for the fans and everyone involved. But all that matters is winning. Ruiz refusing to be held, as is his right in the ring. Now, yeah, Joshua can't get lazy with those tie-ups. He's going to tie up Andy Ruiz. He's got to grab him with both hands. Don't give Ruiz a chance to flurry off those clinches. And we're going to see the conditioning or lack thereof from Ruiz now as we get into the final rounds because he is going to have to keep that fight and just hope that it might be one time where he can pop Joshua as he eats an uppercut. But now he wings back. And oh, the right hand chopping from Ruiz. That landed hard. Joshua back on his toes. And the difference between fight one and fight two right there. Anthony Joshua landed a big right hand, but did not engage. He fell off balance and backed off again. This is the discipline we were talking about. Joshua able to get hit, but in this time he didn't wobble. He didn't go down. Instead, he went back to the proper tactics, fighting at distance. Fighting a smart fight. Catching Andy Ruiz with big punches and letting him come to him. Back up, keep boxing, keep discipline.
Anthony Joshua's father in attendance. It is a crisp 63 degrees here. You see him adjusting his coat, and you see his son applying the stick to Andy Ruiz. I kept saying that Anthony Joshua's gonna have to box early and fight late. Coming up in the last couple of rounds, he's gonna have to fight off the aggressive Andy Ruiz, because Ruiz should know that he's behind on points. You know, we also have that first fight you know, well in our minds where every time he throws that shot and is able to land on Joshua, I'm waiting for Joshua to go down or be hurt. And that has not happened here tonight. Round 10, scheduled of course for the championship 12. Chris Maddox giving Ruiz that last round. I don't know, how do you justify that, Chris, given the early work by Joshua with the jab? I thought he did well with the jab, but we didn't show a lot of those combinations that Ruiz landed, consequential combinations that buckled Joshua. I thought he landed the more impactful punches in that ninth round. There's a good right hand by Ruiz. Joshua needs to bend his knees and fight a little bit smaller now. Ruiz, the shorter man, already got the distance and the height of Joshua. He, he's already timing the movement, so it'll be smart for Joshua to bend his knees and fight a little bit smaller now. Andy Ruiz told us, hey, I see openings. That led to his seventh round explosion. He sees something and his hands just move. He is able to really just let it go when he sees an opening and he has his man hurt. Anthony Joshua has made that nearly impossible tonight for him to sustain that, but you know it is always there. The possibility of Ruiz opening up the arsenal. Ruiz is looking for a counter right hand over a lazy jab of Joshua. Joshua just better keep that stick sharp and laser focused, because Ruiz is looking to counter. He's inching his way in. If you notice his feet, Ruiz's feet, he's inching his way in, trying to look for an overhand right over a lazy jab of Joshua. And the real-time odds you see from MGM. Anthony Joshua now a prohibitive favorite as he built up a points lead. Again, you can call them the championship rounds, but every round goes in the books. The judges hand them in, and they're gone and you would figure that Joshua has piled up a big lead here tonight. Ruiz told us that he can't let Anthony Joshua grow bravado, and bravado wasn't the, the word that he chose, but right now, Anthony Joshua boxing with confidence, with swag, behind the jab, and sticking to his game plan, which is most important. Ruiz fighting out of the clinch. Joshua's feet always on the move. Very different fighter. Able to make the adjustment in style. And really showing Sergio the championship pedigree so far. Not standing in front of Ruiz, not letting him plant his feet. Just, I keep repeating, it's just strategy at its best. He's sticking, he's moving, he's boxing, but he got the respect of Ruiz with those right hands. That's what I want to see, some jabs to the chest and to the belly of Ruiz. You got to alternate it because you don't want to get time with a jab. Well, you know, again, Manny Robles had said he wanted to get inside earlier, and you pointed out, Sergio, in that last round, Ruiz having success with his shots to the body, but we didn't see it here. Because Anthony Joshua was on his toes, sticking and moving. We fought 10 here for the heavyweight championship in the desert. And you see Ruiz punching air, but then finding the jaw of Joshua with his right hand. That's the story of the night, the snapping jab from Anthony Joshua. That will make for beautiful photographs in Joshua's gym. That stick coming off beautifully. And now he's talking to him as well. You can imagine what this man went through. He said he had a real mix of emotions in New York. He actually stayed in New York after losing his title and getting beat up for about two weeks. And he said, hey, I just kept going out. He said, the more you go out, the more you have to face the reality of the situation. He said, I had to confront my own friends. I had to go back to the gym because it is, Sergio, embarrassing, humiliating to be laid out and beaten down and having everything taken from you. Well, the last six months he has devoted himself and is in position to get his world championships back. Chris Maddox giving that last 10th round to Anthony Joshua. You know, there'll be a lot of people watching this fight that might be dissatisfied with it. 
if Joshua continues and wins fighting like this, but this is what you have to do. When you go up against an opponent with a granite chin and better hand speed than you, this is exactly the kind of fight you have to do. Yeah, I, there's always going to be some criticism, but I don't see how it could be warranted, Chris, to your point. Nice jab again, given what he went through the first time out being stunned and then coming out and executing a boxing plan beautifully. I know, like, you know, the Klitschko brothers were criticized for years for doing that, but he hasn't stunk the place out. He's boxed beautifully. There's a difference. And Chris, he wanted Anthony Joshua to change trainers and, and look for a new strategy. This is exactly what he needed. He stayed with Robert McCracken, and he's fighting an Emmanuel Stewart-type fight without changing trainers. All right, let's be clear. I suggested that he think about changing trainers. I didn't walk up to him and say, go change trainers. Sergio, I'm going to have to take a point away. Next time. Round 11. Anthony Joshua boxing beautifully, showing range, movement. Said, I have to be the smart fighter. He has done that tonight. But he's also landed his share of leather. It's not as if he's in there. There's another beautiful jab. Look, you can land jabs like that and then be on the move. You don't have to stand there and trade. He said, if I, if I stick to my plan, if I box, opportunities will present themselves. He's engaged here and there, but he has wisely moved out when Ruiz starts winging that hook. And wisely clinched every time he got Andy Ruiz got inside. Like right there, he, they got inside and Ruiz pushed them off. And look at him pop the jab out again. Ruiz's head just bounces back off that jab. That last copy box number we had, jabs 49 to 21 in favor of Anthony Joshua. You know, while Joshua didn't change chief strategy, Sergio, he did add two new voices in his corner. One of those voices was a trainer that has a bit of a history at the Kronk Gym. And as we know from watching Emmanuel Stewart's fighters over the years, the Kronk Gym, they fight off the jab extremely well. Another jab, bouncing the head back. British fans are chanting. Ruiz is frustrated, always advancing, but unable to have success. Another jab lands from Joshua. Whoever was wondering if Joshua can be on his bike, sticking and moving, fighting discipline behind the jab, 11 rounds in so far, he's been doing just that. He has showed focus, he has showed growth. Even after being at the pinnacle, being the number one heavyweight in the world, widely regarded at least, and being a heavyweight champion with several of the belts, he has been able to change after adversity, after embarrassment. We are in Riyadh, here in the cultural hub of Diria, the Diria Arena, brand new. A beautiful sight here this evening. And it's been a beautiful sight for Anthony Joshua fans here tonight. Just jab fest, moving around, use the ring, sticking and moving. It's really impressive watching such a massive big man who made a career just pounding and knocking out fighters, sticking and moving, floating like a butterfly, and stinging like a bee with that jab. Anthony Joshua said he just took things for granted. He said, now I know what it means. I took it in stride before, but I know I want to be great. So he had to endure all the embarrassment, everyone questioning his heart. Andy Ruiz shaking his head as he comes out for the final round. Round 12, heavyweight championship of the world, and Andy Ruiz, we believe, needs a knockout to stay heavyweight champ. Wide margin, wide gap for Chris Mannix on his scorecard. Virtually all, every round for Anthony Joshua so far. And I think, Chris, you gave him the two rounds you could give him. And flashes of Chavez, Meldrick Taylor, where Chavez was losing every round with Meldrick Taylor, and he got clipped towards the end of the fight. Another one is Chavez Jr. versus Sergio Martinez, where he hurt him in the end of the fight. Can Andy Ruiz do the same thing that Chavez Sr. and Jr. did? Ruiz trying with the right hand. He's in desperation mode. He has to be. Final two minutes of this fight. Hard right hand by Joshua. Ruiz shakes it off. Yeah, his chance is to say, bring it and stay in close. But maybe Joshua wants to do some damage here before he says goodnight. Joshua lands a massive right hand, and what does he do? Continues to box, continues to stick and move. The cut has not been a big factor in this fight. It was a clean right hand from Anthony Joshua. 
That opened things up early in this fight. It has not been a big issue, but the skill, speed, a man 11 pounds lighter than he was in the first fight, is able to use this large ring, 22 feet all around, and box the night away and get a considerable points lead here, we believe, as we get into the second half of round number 12. Andy Ruiz may have the faster hands, but he has the slower feet. And that was the game plan. That's the key to the strategy. Beat the faster man with the faster feet by moving around. One of the most improbable heavyweight champions in boxing history, along with Primo Carnera, Max Baer, and Buster Douglas. And will it be just a one-hit wonder? There can be much more for Andy Ruiz, but it looks like he is losing his championship belts here tonight. He continues to chase Joshua as he is running out of time. And Andy Ruiz will probably have to ask himself after this fight, were those 15 pounds worth it? If he was a little bit lighter, might he have been a little bit more effective? No question. And Manny Robles wanted him in camp in July. He showed up in September. Joshua was in the, in the gym throughout those six months in some form or another and it has shown up here tonight final 30 seconds you know Ruiz isn't going to quit you know that he's going to try to the belt hard right hand comes up short for Ruiz Ruiz says come fight me here we're a little late for that not going to happen in the final seconds Joshua continues to dance, and Anthony Joshua with a resounding answer. He takes a prideful stroll around the ring, walking in front of his British fans, walking in front of the British broadcasters, as if to say, how did you like that? Bring those belts back to me. If Sugar Ray Leonard was here, he'll be praising the performance of Anthony Joshua. Andy Ruiz doing what Hagler did, come fight me. And what did Leonard do? No, no, no. This is my night tonight. Ruiz frustrated there, cut up, not beat up, but smacked around a little bit. He took punishment throughout, a popping jab, snapping his head back, several right hands as well. And Anthony Joshua points to his heart, and you know what? He showed heart tonight. Not just heart, like on fight night, but heart every day in the gym getting prepared. The crowd here, excited. It was an exciting night, tremendous amount of drama. And even with Joshua taking the mayhem out of the fight, he makes his point. Look, Anthony Joshua did not avenge his loss with the same flair as Lennox Lewis or Vladimir Klitschko when it comes to Brewster, but this is no less consequential. Anthony Joshua's career could have been on the line in a fight like this, yep. and he avenged it, that defeat significantly. There with his father in the ring. Look, this is an Olympic gold medalist. He was an unbeaten heavyweight champ with six title defenses. He has the looks, the personality, the charisma. But again, it's all at stake when you go into the ring, and he got starched last time out, but he bounces back beautifully here tonight in the desert. What a different set of circumstances, too. You see Eddie Hearn, the promoter for Joshua, hugging Joshua's father. Last time out, they were yelling at each other in the ring about stuff that happened in the build-up to the fight. And CompuBox telling us that Anthony Joshua threw the most jabs of his career in a single round in that last 12th round. Let's go back through this fight. Right away, we saw Anthony Joshua long, lean, and snapping jabs out from the get-go. Long right hand. Again, these are hard shots. Wasn't just feather dusting, wasn't dancing, wasn't stinking it out. He was boxing, and boxing beautifully. Ruiz, to his credit, never quit. We go to Let's the go to the ring. Cars after 12 rounds of boxing. Glenn Feldman and Benoit Rousseau both have it 118 to 110. Steve Gray scores it 119 to 109. All three scorecards go to the winner by unanimous decision. The fighting pride of London, England, and once again, the heavyweight champion of the world, the man known as AJ Anthony. Joshua! Anthony Joshua is once again the heavyweight champion of the world. Look at him puff out his chest. He deserves this moment. Embarrassed in New York City. Beaten down by a very game challenger. And he has regained it.
erasing the sting of the embarrassment and the defeat and showed complete boxing class in the ring tonight. If you're Anthony Joshua, you rejoin the conversation about being the top heavyweight in the world. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Well, you know, Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder are looking on a big hug. A lot of sportsmanship between these two. These are two very good people. Comport themselves beautifully, and there's no animosity there, just good competition at the highest level. And for Andy Ruiz, this isn't the end. I think he'd have a lot of problems with, say, a Tyson Fury, who throws a lot of punches and keep him off him. But against, say, a Deontay Wilder, who doesn't throw a lot of punches, I think he'd be competitive. There's still big fights ahead for Andy Ruiz. Well, look, Hassan Rahman, you know, his career didn't end there. There are lots of fighters who were won the heavyweight title and lost it right away, but continued on in their career. And no matter what, whether you're, you know, Michael Moore or Ingemar Johansson, you have etched your name in boxing history by winning the title. So he has a lot to be proud of, but tonight is Anthony Joshua's night. He'll be taking pictures throughout the evening. A triumphant performance as the challenger turns to champ. 94% of this fight, according to CompuTrack, fought at distance. So Joshua had the discipline to fight at distance all night long. And you saw Sergio, he was tempted to slug it out at certain times, but he thought better of it. I couldn't see Anthony Joshua winning, mixing it up with Andy Ruiz, or even fighting on the inside, or trying to back up Ruiz. That wasn't the game plan. That's not the way that Joshua was gonna win the fight. The only way, in my opinion, that he could have won and regained those titles, the titles is exactly what he did. It's boxing, moving, and clinching when he had to. Again, Andy Ruiz becoming heavyweight champion, a la Leon Spinks, Hasim Rahman, or James Braddock. But the clock strikes one on the Cinderella Man. Ruiz's corner, Manny Robles, his trainer said, yes, we expect him to stick and move for half of the fight, but can he do it for 12 entire rounds? There's no way he does it. Anthony Joshua just did in impressive fashion. And I just love his comportment throughout. Again, saying, hey, I had to confront my friends. It was an embarrassment, but I got back in the gym. And again, the scale doesn't tell everything, but it indicates something. He comes in 11 pounds lighter when he was already an Adonis, but he knew he had to change. It's not easy. You have to spar a lot to drop that weight, and he did that, Sergio. Andy Ruiz said that he couldn't let Anthony Joshua grow bravado, and bravado is not the word he used. Instead, Anthony Joshua grew something else, a brain, because that's the way you beat the toughness and the man with the faster hand. You move around, you stick and move, and do not let him get planted. Look, Joshua said, hey, my weight is due to my style of living. He started boxing June 20th. And he says, my weight adjusted. He wasn't looking to lose weight. He just lost weight because he was working hard all summer. And I'm sorry to say, Andy Ruiz was not. He was not. And that's what happens when you go from zero to 60 with popularity, Brian. When you become the champ and you upset the world like that, the world gets planted on your feet and you indulge. AJ, AJ. And the biggest concern for a fighter with a meteoric rise is the immediate meteoric fall. And Ruiz, obviously, never known for his conditioning in the first place, but he benefited by being a late replacement in New York City, coming off a fight only five weeks before. So he was in shape, he stayed in shape, and he shocked the world. But tonight, Anthony Joshua had a plan, he stuck to it, and he, right now, can make his claim once again as the baddest man on the planet. The baddest and smartest. Because that was an excellent performance for Anthony Joshua, sticking and moving, boxing and fighting. Excellent, excellent strategy by him and his trainer, Robert McCracken. And we have three giants in the heavyweight division once again, in Joshua, Wilder, and Fury. And you would love to see a little round robin between the three. That would transcend boxing. That would make this sport huge once again. Charismatic big men who can all box, who all have different strengths. Wilder with ungodly power. Joshua now with power and boxing ability, and Fury just a natural fighter, and huge as well. So are you saying that the heavyweight division is back, Brian? It should be, if they could all fight each other. We are awaiting the interviews in the ring. Andy Scott, there's the pose for you. I believe that is the Jack Dempsey that was uh, adopted by Mike Tyson and then Glenn Kauf Johnson.
But that is standing there saying, I am the man. And Anthony Joshua is just that. Again, Andy Scott of Sky Sports will do the initial interview of Anthony Joshua. We'll hear from the man himself as he talks to the local Saudi officials and royals here ringside. Andy Scott is in the ring with the champ. Anthony Joshua. Yes, sir. It's how you come back from defeat that defines you. You're a two-time heavyweight champion of the world. Please tell us how you're feeling right now. Okay. First of all, I want to thank God. I want to say Bismillah. And then, <laughs> next, I want to say, man, the first time was so nice, I had to do it twice. <laughs> talk us through the game plan, talk us through the fight, and how you carried it out. A man like me don't make no excuses. My boy Chisora said I can win this if I'm ready to D.I.E. And look, this is about boxing. I'm used to knocking guys out, you know what I'm saying? But last time I realized, hang on a minute, I hurt the man and I got caught coming in and I gave the man his credit. There was no excuses, right? But I said to myself, I'm gonna correct myself and come again. I respect Andy and his family, his trainers so much. I just wanted to put on a great boxing masterclass and also show the sweet science of this lovely sport. It's about hitting, and not getting hit. Physically, we can see the difference, lighter, faster, but mentally, was there a difference here, a change in mentality as well? Never a change in mentality. You know the saying, stay hungry, stay humble. I'm hungry, I'm humble in defeat, and I'm gonna remain humble in victory. And I just wanna say thank you to Andrew Ruiz and his family. I wanna say thank you to everyone in Saudi Arabia. I wanna say thank you to all the traveling fans, all of my supporters, and I wanna say thank you to God and thank you to Eddie Hearn, Barry Hearn, all my team, respect to Tom Hall, my mentor, Matram, Rob McCracken, Angel, Joby, Jamie, Chris, Gatman, Mark Ellison, Mike Loosemore, Rob Madden, man, Selps, Henry, 258 Management, I don't know what to say, I can just keep on going on. Soapbox London, Sky Sports, The Zone, and everyone in this building, let's go! How difficult, how difficult is it to keep a cool head when someone like Andy Ruiz is marching you down over 12 rounds? It's all about preparation. As I said, one day when I release a book, I'll talk through my career. Listen, careers are all about experience. There's no losing, there's no winning. It's just about creating great memories in this game that we all love. I took my L and I bounced back. Anyone can do it. Life is a roller coaster. What do you want me to do? Give up. I hear certain man saying, oh, I should retire, I should retire. Come on, man. We love this sport. Andy, are you ready to retire? Are you ready to retire? Exactly, he's a warrior. He wants to go again. Please respect us. This is what we love to do. I respect Andy. Who wants to see the third fight? So let's ask that question. It's 1-1. One, one. Let's talk about the future. Would you do it again? Without a doubt. Listen. If you heard, we're going to do it a third. <laughs> Andy, while you're here, commiserations. What went wrong? You know what? It was, it was his night, man. I think, I think I didn't prepare as how I should have. And you know, I, I gained too much weight. But I don't want to give no excuses. He won. He boxed me around. But you know what? If we do the third, the third fight, best believe I'm going to get in fucking best shape. And I'm going to be the best shape of my life. Apologies for the language. Was that key that you did come in too heavy? There was a lot of raised eyebrows at the weigh-in yesterday. How much of an effect did that have during the fight? You know what, it kind of affected me a lot. Um, I thought I was gonna feel stronger. I thought I was gonna be better, but you know what? I think next fight I'm gonna get more prepared. I'm gonna work with my team a little bit more. I try to train myself kind of for, for my last, for this preparation. Like I said, I don't want to give no excuse. Anthony Joshua did a hell of a job, but I just want to give thanks to God and to everybody in here in Saudi Arabia that was supporting. Did you feel that you were going to get to him as the fight was going on? You were chasing him and chasing him and chasing him. After the first fight, you knew you could hurt him. Did you think you were going to get to him? And how disappointed are you that you couldn't get there? Yeah, you know, I think I was chasing him too much. Instead of cutting the rings, I was hesitating too much. My, I, I felt my arms felt like I couldn't throw my combinations, but 
you know what, I know next time I'm gonna do a lot better, but who wants to see the third trilogy fight right here? In Saudi Arabia, baby. Commiserations to you, Andy. Let's have a word on the future with promoter Eddie Hearn. Andy wants number three. AJ seems to want number three. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia seems to want number three. What are the future plans? The future plans is celebrate. Celebrate and celebrate hard. This man has been responsible for the growth of British boxing. He has given everything to the sport. He won Olympic gold for Great Britain. He won a world championship after 16 fights, unified it after 19 fights, unified it after 21 fights. And tonight in Saudi Arabia, he becomes a two-time heavyweight champion of the world. And that is beautiful. How much did you enjoy that? They wrote him off. They said he was all hype. You know, he had to come back from humiliation at Madison Square Garden. Tonight, he's the governor. He's the governor of the division. He's two-time heavyweight champion of the world. Give him the respect. He's a great individual. Mate, we're coming home tomorrow night. Heathrow, we're landing. This is going to be one hell of a, a flight home. And I want to say thank you so much to Prince Khalid and Prince Abdulaziz from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. You know, we got criticized for coming here. The experience and the welcome we've received from the people has been incredible. The vision that they have for the boxing, unforgettable. Tonight, he's done it. Anthony Joshua, two-time heavyweight champion of the world. One more on the future. This is definitely uh, Andy and Anthony's night, but is the Grand Slam unification still a chance? Yes, we wanted the undisputed for years and years. Don't worry about that. Tonight's about celebrating. We'll do what he wants to do. He's always wanted to be undisputed. People listen to rubbish people talk. We said we're not going to talk about any other fights. And you know what? We're not even going to do it now. We're not even going to give him the airtime because he's the king. He's oh. the king. No, you are the king. No. You are. They wrote you off. They wrote you off. They said you were hype. You come back. You schooled him. And you're the king again. Trust me. I'm worried that he's coming for the microphone. There's a lot of people that will have stayed up watching this. You've got fans oh. all over the world, but you, your fan base is in Britain. Have you got a message for everyone back home? As I always say, I'm not perfect, but I'm trying. And I also want to shout out Prince Khalid, Prince Abdulaziz, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, SCEE -E, holding us down. We're going to see more boxing in this region. We're going to see more boxing in London and America. Once again, thank you so much for coming. Listen, I'm going to jump on Instagram, send me the location. Where's the turn up? We're going to party tonight. Two time. Two time. Congratulations. Well, a lot to digest there. Brian Kenny here ringside with Sergio Mora once again. And look, uh, at the very outset, just to hear what Anthony Joshua said, the key to this fight, you know, amid everything else, stay hungry, stay humble. And that was key to his preparation. Andy Ruiz saying that, hey, we didn't have the right preparation. Well, that's on him. He understands that. He wants a third fight. But that's where it starts, Sergio. Stay hungry, stay humble. He was humbled. He was embarrassed. And now he's back on top. You know, Andy Ruiz made Snickers famous by saying that he liked to eat Snickers, but he didn't stay hungry. He satisfied his hunger tonight. It was more than just strategy. You didn't get what I said there. I'm following there. you. Go ahead. Okay, so he didn't stay hungry. He was satisfied becoming mm -hmm. champion, and it happens to a lot of fighters. Uh, he didn't show that discipline. He came in overweight, and in this in this business, it's more than just being able to fight and having fast hands and powerful. You got to stay hungry. You got to stay disciplined inside the ring and especially outside of the ring. Andrew Ruiz wasn't doing that. Let's go inside the ring right now. Chris Mannix is with the I champ. Did. Let's hear from Chris. I Anthony. Sorry. <laughs> Plenty of reason to celebrate. Congratulations. You've had a lot of significant wins in your career. Where does this one rank? I just wanted to say um, I respect Andy and a man that beat me fair and square. As I said, it's like an exam. I failed the first time. I studied harder. I came back and I got the W. Where does it rank? Number two, because the first fight with Vladimir Klitschko meant so much to me because I learned so much. And um, I respect Vladimir so much because he gives me so much advice and stuff like that. So that fight with Vladimir is what created this night here. And that's why that fight will always rank number one. This fight ranks number two. Was the difference in this fight just that you didn't get clipped in the third round? I that you didn't a few times. But not in the same way you did in the third round of the first fight. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that, that would have knocked down a horse. And he's a strong boy. He's a strong man. You know what I mean? But so am I. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just smarter. As I said, the first time I said, cool, he beat me. You could see how I was feeling in the ring, but I respect him so much. And that's why I prepared diligently. I put my head down, 
and I'm going to follow the same cycle that I took when I left New York. I got back in the gym, continued my routine, and now I'm going to get back on the bicycle and continue to ride the wave that I'm on and stay focused, man. You were very disciplined throughout this fight. You didn't get into too many exchanges with Andy. How much was that part of the game plan to not get into a firefight? So I, I like the 70s fighters and they know how to box. Boxing is a science, you know. But at the end of the day, I know that my fans want to see, see me knock people out and stuff like that. And I can do that. You know, I can do that all day. But sometimes with certain fighters, you have to box smarter as well. And I understand what Andy brings to the table. So I just have to decapitate him in a different way. You told me after the last fight, there was a story as to why you lost that fight. You didn't want to tell it till after it was over. What is the story and why you lost? Uh, not yet. I don't, let, let, let's, let's take this in and let's respect Andy. Andy beat me the first time fair and square. Um, I'll tell you, in, like, just you. And one day, but Andy beat me fair and square the first time and I beat him fair and square the second time. And, We'll go again another time, and until my career is done, I'll maybe announce it to the public where I was at. But you just have to look after yourself and stay dedicated in this sport because, as we learned the first time, one punch can change everything. You know, you win this fight, and of course, you've got mandatories now to deal with. But does this reignite the conversation of you, Deontay Wilder, or Tyson Fury? What can I say? What can I say? I've been speaking about these guys for a long time, and. You can see this time when I had the opportunity to focus solely on Andy, my head's in the right place. So when, when Wilder and, and Fury are, and, and Ortiz, Usyk um, are really, really ready, they'll make the call. Um, but until then, I respect them, they're doing what they're doing, and I'm not going to continue to call these guys out. You know, I'm making my own history in my own lane. And if they want to come and be part of that, look at what happened to Andy when he beat me the first time. He's a, he's a, he's, created his own legacy and if these guys want to come and create legacy let's step in the ring and I'm willing to fight anyone as you can see that's my fourth world champion man I've I've won the championship of Charles Martin I beat Vladimir Klitschko for the WBA and IBF I beat Charles Martin for the WBO I beat Parker for the WBO and I just beat Andy Ruiz and unified again like come on if you guys want to create history you know where we are but with all due respect let them carry on doing what they're doing as well because they're doing their thing but I'm not going to just shout and rave about Wilder and them man there because I've been doing that and it makes me lose focus on what I'm capable of doing. Do you think we'll see a third fight with you and Andy? Oh yeah, 100%. But for now, I like the saying, it was so nice, I had to do it twice. <laughs> Congratulations, AJ. Boom. Eddie, Eddie, can we bring you in here? Eddie Hearn, promoter, Anthony Joshua. Eddie, you said you were going to celebrate like a madman if AJ won this fight. You did. What did you think of his performance? Oh, it was an absolute masterclass. I didn't know if he could stay disciplined like that for 12 rounds. It was a schooling. You know, people, people have doubted his boxing ability. People have doubted his endurance. People have doubted him since the defeat. And it wasn't just a defeat, let's be honest. It was humiliating at Madison Square Garden. You know, it was the American, you know, coming out party, and he lost. He could have gone away, he could have sold. You know what, he brushed himself down because he's a true champion. And when you look at his resume, Chris, that's 24 fights in now. He beat Dillian White, he beat Charles Martin for the world title, beat Molina, beat Brazil, unified against Klitschko, beat Takam, unified against Parker, beat Povetkin, box Ruiz, box Ruiz. Which heavyweight has a resume like this? Nobody. Give him the respect that he deserves. This guy has, from the get-go, been punching above his weight, but now he's improving. He's learning the sweet science, and that was beautiful. That was like Picasso, you know, on a canvas, just telling a beautiful story. Clinic. I know you want to celebrate this win, deservedly so, but or, excuse, there are some decisions to make in the coming months with the WBA and the WBO. What do you do next with Anthony Joshua? We celebrate first, and we plan secondly. These belts are important to him. He's wanted to be undisputed champion since he beat Parker. All right? It's not us. People say one face, one name. No, I don't want to listen to that. That was all rubbish. He's been wanting to do it. He's the one that steps up. Check the resume. Cold facts. Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury. The resumes don't even compete. But we'll do what we always do. Just stay focused, construct a plan, take care of business. He's a class man, class individual. What an ambassador for the sport of boxing. What a future this man's got. Tonight, 
He brought boxing to Saudi Arabia, the Middle East, 15,000 people sold out. The world stopped to watch Anthony Joshua become a two-time heavyweight world champion. And it was all live on zone, baby. Do you take the same attitude as Anthony when it comes to Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder? You're not going to chase them anymore? No, he's been chasing them for years. He's been chasing them for years. They'll happen. And you know what? Maybe they were right that they walked away from those fights, Deontay Wilder, because it's worth a lot more now than it was back then. But he just wants it. He wants the legacy. And tonight, he created the legacy here in Saudi Arabia. You know, this isn't a guy who's just, you know, going in and selling seven or 8,000 tickets. This is a guy that's filling football stadiums, 90,000 in Wembley, 80,000 in Wales. MSG completely sold out. Saudi Arabia completely sold Good out. Time. This is a guy that is transforming boxing. These other guys can't lace his boots like that. And tonight, Andy Ruiz couldn't lace his boots. And he's going to get better and better. 24 fights in. The best is yet to come.